music ministry team. Oh, hello, everyone. Um, and we are so excited to be with you. Thank you for having us tonight. Please sing along as we uh, live by the name of Jesus.
students who are in the worship team of, of their journey and of God's transformation in their lives. And so um, I'm not going to say much tonight. I think their stories speak for themselves. But if you would like some more information about Teen Challenge after the service tonight, we have a table over here. Um, we'd love to give you some information, um, talk to you about sponsoring a student. You maybe got a brochure on your way in tonight. If you didn't get one, come by and, and grab one from us. Um, so thank you so much for having us, and uh, Pierre's going to share his testimony with us. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm Pierre Parnett. I'm uh, 32 years old, and uh, this is my testimony. So from a very young age, um, I witnessed my parents uh, drink. They were alcoholics, and I witnessed a lot of domestic abuse. At the age of five, they had divorced, and I, I remember like the firefighters and the police always being in my house because of their carry-on, and uh, that was pretty hard for me growing up as a child and trying to understand like why my parents like didn't live together and why they always fought, like why other kids at my school, their mom and dad loved each other except mine, like didn't seem to get along at all. So I struggled with that all through elementary school and growing up, and. Uh, I ended up uh, having my first sip of uh, alcohol at the age of 14, and uh, the same year, on Christmas Eve, my uh, father was released from an alcohol treatment center, and uh, he had called my aunt and told her he was really upset because he was in really rough shape and that he wasn't going to be able to see my sister and I for uh, Christmas the following day. So. Um, I, I have no idea why, but the next decision he made was to uh, go to a bar in his condition, and uh, he ended up collapsing on the floor that night. And um, rather than calling him an ambulance or getting him any help, they just decided to pick him up and throw him in the alleyway, and he froze to death that very night. And um, my heart really, it became stone cold, and I fell away from the faith, and I just, uh, I had this new outlet in drinking to deal with this grief and pain, so I plugged right into it. And uh, it took off from there. I'm not going to go through the next decade of poor decisions I made, but you know, I'm 5'3 and I drank like I was 10 feet tall. So, you know, to give you a little picture of what was going on. And uh, it got to the point where my wife, at seven months pregnant, realized that my life was unmanageable and she had to make a pretty tough decision to leave me at that point in her pregnancy. Um, she never really gave up on me, and God was always working through her to uh, try and get me to get help. But she needed to get herself into a stable situation, and that's what she did. And uh, shortly after that, I ended up losing my house because my drinking problem had got to the point where I, I'd rather spend my last dollar on a can of beer than pay the rent. So, um, you know, I, that's kind of like where my rock bottom was. You know, I'm 32 and I have a kid on the way and I'm living at my mom's house because I've lost my house and, you know, can barely get to work. I ended up getting a text from her when she went into labor. And, uh, of course, I had been drinking that night and I was pretty intoxicated. And I was really worried that if I went to the hospital that night in the state I was in, I would have had a children's aid called on us. And I just, I didn't make it to the birth of my son. And I was really, like, depressed and I was... I was just kind of following the same footsteps my father did. But, uh, you know, God wasn't done with me yet. So I get another text to come see my son. And uh, I didn't realize that Amber had set up an intervention for me. So I, I go there, and there's a few people there. And they're all uh, urging me to get help. And they tell me about this program called Teen Challenge. 
And then I'm thinking, you know, taking a year off, you know, is a long time to take away from my son. And they're looking at me going, well, you're not exactly around anyway, so why not use that year on something meaningful and, uh, you know, truly change? So I did. And uh, since coming to Team Challenge, um, a lot's changed in only, I'm in my sixth month. And, uh, and it started to change immediately when I allowed God back into my life and like genuinely wanted to change and got help. Um, my uh, wife and I are back together right now. And my son is getting the father he deserves. And uh, the program's helped me in so many ways. And it's helped me to actually deal with my, uh, my father's death and uh, you know, realizing that bearing that pain with alcohol wasn't like a healthy way of dealing with that kind of situation. And um, yeah, like the program's taught me a lot, of, uh, a lot about patience. I have 50 brothers now in this program. So, you know, it's good to practice that kind of patience. And uh, spiritually, it's helped me a lot because I, I look at my past and I can see like where I went wrong and I ask myself like, was that like Christ-like and what I was doing in these situations? And you know, how would, have, how would Christ have responded in those situations? And if you had just let him into your life instead of walking away, how would you have responded better in those situations? So it's helped me a lot in uh, reflecting that way. And it's taught me that I can forgive myself and that you know, the past can be the past. And with Christ, there's a future full of joy, love, and happiness. And I'd like to uh, share a scripture with you. This was a huge wow moment for me in the program, and uh, I have it here. It's John chapter 5, verse 19. Jesus, Jesus explained, I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by himself. He, only, he does only what he sees the Father do. Whatever the Father does, the Son does. And for me, this made me think about like what I saw my father doing when I was a little boy and how I followed in his footsteps and where that got me. And I was in a situation now where I have a little boy, a baby, he's 17 months old. And what do I really want to show him? Like, what am I going to show him when he's growing up, right? And how is he going to follow my example? And I'm glad to say that with Team Challenge, he's going to see what a life in Christ is like and how we can prosper in that. And that's my testimony, and thank you for listening. You are welcome to sing this next song along with us, or if you don't know it, just go ahead and listen. Thank you. 
I'm Joshua, I'm 18 years old, and I'm from Cornwall, Ontario. So in my childhood, I grew up in a, a good Christian home. My uh, father was now sober for 30 years and a born-again Christian. So he tried his entire life to keep me away from drugs and alcohol and keep me close to the Lord. There was something wrong, though, in my household. There was a lot of abuse. My parents were constantly fighting, verbally and physically, every night. And I'd come home to, as a little kid, seeing my parents in confrontations. I remember one time when I was about seven years old, I had to go in between my parents, hearing these words that no seven-year-old should hear. And I repeated those words, telling my parents both to be quiet and go to their rooms. So this made me, at a young age, have to start having responsibilities when I should just be relying on my parents, and they shouldn't be acting like the kids. So now I'm uh, constantly uh, getting bullied in uh, elementary school. I was very overweight when I was a kid, so that was uh, really hurtful when uh, every day I would be getting beat up, spit on, etc. And it just made me feel like I was nothing. Then on top of that now, at the age of 14, my parents divorced. So my dad leaves the house and I, I feel resented and I resent my father. I feel like my father, I wasn't good enough, so he didn't love me enough to stay with my mother. And now I'm alone with my mother, and he's gone. Now I'm in high school, and uh, from all this pain of not feeling like I was loved, I started experimenting with just drinking and a little bit of marijuana. And I thought it was all fun and games at times. But eventually it started escalating, and the abuse that uh, was between my mother and my father, now it was me and my uh, mother were in confrontations. And she was abusing me constantly, uh, verbally and physically, and this, this just destroyed me. I thought now the only person that was still with me hates me now. And it just destroyed me. So I started being the wild child. I didn't care. I wanted to be accepted, so I was a people pleaser. I'd do whatever it took at anything, doing crazy stunts like jumping off bridges not even knowing how deep the water was, unspeakable amounts of substances. So now my rock bottom, I mean, uh, I uh, wanted a fix really bad. And uh, so I was asking my mom for some money. And she didn't give me the money. And she didn't know that's what I wanted it for. So I so selfishly threatened to take my own life just because she wouldn't give me money. Right there in front of her, knife to the wrist. Just manipulating her. So now I'm just caught in a deadly cycle, being fired from job to job, more and more drugs. I'm now caught in a crippling addiction of cocaine, molly, uh, uh, speed, uh, drugs, just all the drugs. And most of all, which was not filling the hole at all, as I was addicted to uh, women and I was addicted to relationships because I was also very codependent. Uh, now at this point, I used to be like a, a bigger uh, fellow, like I said. Now I'm at my lowest weight and I'm at 185 pounds because I did a week-long binge in Molly and I stayed up all week and not ate anything. So now I'm just uh, very sick, pale, and you can tell that I'm not healthy. So I reach out to my, uh, my uh, youth group leader. This was the major God moment. And God is so good how... I, was, grew, I grew up in the church and I made those relationships. She had Teen Challenge already open up on the computer. And my sister was with her. And they uh, kept encouraging me to go to this program. Go to this program. And I'm like, okay, well, it's, it's $1,100. $1, How am I going to get that money? Because at this point, I've spent all my money on drugs. And uh, she's like, don't worry, God will provide. So I go to church the next day. And uh, I remember very uh, firmly after this happened, that uh, my God always told me, no, no, not God, sorry, my father always told me, if he's my father too, there you go, but, yeah. amen, praise yeah. the Lord, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so my, my earthly father told me, you have to accept God in your heart. You can't just go to church, you can't just do this thing, 
I had no idea what he was talking about. I was like, okay, whatever. Like, I'm going to go over here, Dad. And uh, so I'm in the service, and God's just speaking to me. It's just clicking, clicking. I'm just like, what, what's going on right now? Like, I'm trip, like, right now I'm sober for two days. I have bad withdrawals, shaking, freaking out, sweating, and I didn't want to be there. So my whole congregation prays over me. At that moment, I break down on my knees and I ask Jesus Christ in my heart and as my Lord and Savior. And that was the best decision of my life. All the sorrow, all the pain, everything gone like that. And my, and my withdrawals, instantly. I was just, yeah. praise God, praise God. So on top of that miracle, I'm like freaking out, like, like laughing hysterically, like, you know, high in the spirit. I'm just like, wow, like crazy. And then two people come over. Hey, uh, you don't, we don't, we don't, you don't know us, but uh, we want to pay for your teen challenge and take you in for a month so you can stay in a safe environment for, I was just like, oh my gosh, like you really are real. Okay, awesome. Like, like, wow. And uh, so I get to the program and uh, I've learned so much. I've learned how to stay in the word. I just love reading the word. You can learn so much. She just speaks to you all the time and you can just stay. That's how you, you sharpen your sword by reading the word, right? That's how we fend off the enemy. Just how Jesus did in the desert. And um, I've learned to love my brothers and sisters. Most of all, I don't live for anyone else anymore. I only live for God Almighty Himself. And like, I just thank God for taking that burden off that I was being such a, a people pleaser. And uh, now I just want to do God's work. Nothing, nothing else. Be bold in His name. Bring His name to other people. Yeah. Spread His glory. Because that's what we're called to do. Yeah. God is just so good and He deserves everything. He deserves everything from us that we should serve Him with every step we take. And that's how I feel now ever since I've joined this program. I want to go in music ministry now. Uh, I feel like He's really pulling me towards that. And uh, it's just, uh, I just got to keep going on God's plan. And let him take a uh, guide every step I take. And eventually I'm going to be going into uh, Bible college as well. So God is good. And uh, just the verse is very dear to me. I was never courageous enough to be myself, like I said. Putting a mask on every day, changing who I was. So this verse is, speaks to me a lot. Joshua 1, seven. May you be strong and very courageous, that you may observe and do according to the laws which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not stray from it from the right hand or the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Praise God for everything He does in our lives and everything He's going to continue to do. And uh, He's just, He deserves all the glory. The next song we will be singing is called I Surrender. And it's very dear to me, like I said. I was in the, the church my whole life, but I never surrendered until that day. Yeah. And now, my life is completely changed.
again so much, Gospel Express, for having us tonight. As I said, we're here to spread a message of hope and uh, of the joy and the transformation that is available to us in Jesus. And so if there's anyone struggling tonight, we would love to talk to you after the service and pray with you, answer any questions that you have. Um, even if you're not struggling, just come by and talk to us. We'd love to talk to you. Um, and you can find out about sponsoring a student or any any other of your questions. So uh, thank you again so much for having us. And Ryan, you want to come up here? Well, thank you so much. Um, yeah, we're going to take up a, an offering now, and uh, tonight's offering is going entirely towards the Teen Challenge Ministry. Um, it can be given in a number of ways. We have your offering envelope, which you should have received from the ushers when you came in. You can uh, fill out a check uh, payable to Gospel Express and uh, Gospel Express Canada, as per usual, and uh, that money, no matter what gets collected tonight, will go towards Team Challenge. Um, but we also have, uh, apparently there's a debit machine back there, I believe. Um, if someone just feels compelled to give towards this ministry, you're welcome to give that way as well. Um, yeah, there's no, no pressure, but there's, this is a great uh, ministry to support. And uh, there's also information back there, like uh, she said about uh, sponsorship. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Andrew Rupp up to pray for the offering and uh, call the action forward. Well, good evening. God is good, is he not? What a blessing it's been to be here tonight, and I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart and god bless each one of you um, it's amazing what god does for each one of us so ushers come on for it and we'll have a word of prayer that song that they say i surrender and uh our sister made that appeal uh, for anyone here tonight. No matter what you're struggling with, if you surrender to the Lord, He will do an amazing thing in your life. And you can count on that. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we just thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your love, your grace, your mercy. Thank you for the work of your spirit in our lives, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you love and care for us so much that you gave your son, Jesus Christ, to die and pay the price for our sins. That when we were still sinners, that you died for us, Lord. We just are short of words to express fully our appreciation and our love for you, our dear Savior. We give you all honor and praise tonight. And Father, I pray for our brothers here, for Pierre and Josh, and for the other two brothers and my sister, and for everyone from Teen Challenge tonight. God, we lift them to you, and we thank you for the work that they're doing. We thank you for their obedience to you. We thank you for their surrender to you, Lord. And I just pray a continued blessing on that organization and for all of the students there. Lord God, may you continue to work. May you pour out your spirit upon them, God, and may you lead them to a life everlasting, to a life of victory. And I pray, Father, that, that um, you would just use each one of those students, Father, for the furtherance of your kingdom. God, we thank you for each one that's here this evening and for their willingness to come on out and to just to share a little bit um, uh, and give back to you the blessings that you have given them. We ask that you would bless each one here that, that gives back to you tonight, God, and, and uh, we just ask for your blessing on this money uh, that, is, that is forwarded to Teen Challenge, Lord. May it be used for your honor and glory. And Lord, this evening, for the remainder of the service, Father, 
May your glory fall on this place. And uh, may you be honored and glorified. And Father, we just pray that the kingdom of darkness would be pushed back. And uh, that your kingdom would come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. We've got one last song for you as they take up the offering. This is probably our favorite to do together and really summarizes uh, what we're all about. So if you know it, please sing along.